Let's go ahead. And uh, this is an LHA meeting. Did we start with pledge or no? All right. All right, let's, but let's go ahead and I'll call the LHE, uh, I guess we're what? The uh, board, the LHE board. Board of Commissioners. Board of Commissioners to order. And uh, welcome everybody. Let's go ahead and start with roll call through the secretary. Okay, um, so. If not, we can just go ahead and say our names. Yeah, do we have, uh, so Brian Bagley? Here. Holly Christensen? Here. Susie Adonkola Ferry? Here. Marsha Martin? Here. John Peck? Here. Aaron Rodriguez? Here. And Tim Waters? Here. And then um, staff? Do we have uh, Harold Dominguez? Here. Uh, Kathy Fedler? Here. Uh, Karen Roney? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Molly O'Donnell? Here. And then um, Kendra Daniels? Here. And Lisa. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, great. So let's go ahead and uh, just turn the time over to our executive director. And then if you have a presentation or if you want to, whatever it is we're going to talk about tonight, why don't you walk us through it? Okay. Um, I think you need to, um, first thing is we need a review and an approval of the July 3rd. I don't have a copy of the agenda. I don't have a computer. Um, it's, all, it's not a big deal. Just tell so me. So I'll just work you through it. Right. Review and approval of July 13th, 2021, and August 24th. 2021 minutes. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the two minutes? So moved. All right. Does anyone object to voting at the same time? It's theoretically out of order, but we vote all at the same time. All right. Uh, I, who, who moved? All right. We have a motion on the floor to move by Councilman Rodrigo Faring, seconded okay. by Mayor by Holly Christensen, to approve the July 13th and August 24th minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Motion carries unanimously. Let's go ahead and. Do we have any public here who want to talk? Staff, your public, do you want to talk? Harold, you need anybody? Tim. No? <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and close public invite to be heard. Let's go on with new business. Um, Harold, do you want to you want to tell us what each of these are? I don't know. Yeah, we'll call the uh, first item is resolution OHA 2021-06. Resolution to approve submission of application to CDBG program to complete security measures at the suites apartments. Um, you want to give a quick overview? Sure. Of that one? Yeah. So um, as part of a um, crime prevention through an environmental design or septic survey that um, our crime free multi-housing program um, conducted at the suites, they determined that there are trees and shrubs that had grown up and were covering um, windows and doors and blocking security lighting, etc. So they recommended um, that those things be trimmed up mm -hmm. and we did get a um, several quotes for that um, and in researching um, because of budgetary concerns researching cdbg it is cdbg eligible so we asked the laj to submit an application and are recommending um, that for funding which you'll be getting um, seeing that on the city council agenda on the 26th um, should be coming to you but this is to um, after kind of after the fact approve the submission we should have gotten approval before it slipped through the cracks um, approving submission of the application and then um, authorizing um, acceptance of the grant and authorizing the executive director to sign the agreements and all the reporting paperwork can do a motion for um, a move of approval of resolution 2021-06 second has been moved by dr waters second by councilmember mark actually by uh Chair, uh, board member, Commissioner, Commissioner Martin. The uh, I'm just going to go with first names tonight. But anyway, uh, anybody want to offer debate? No. All right. All in favor of resolution LHA 2021 show six. Say aye. 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 Opposed. Say nay. All right. The resolution carries unanimously. Let's go on to five B resolution LHA 2021 show seven. Harold. Um, Karen, do you want to go over this one? Uh, yes, you bet. So this is um. So we're asking the LHJ Board of Commissioners to uh, approve this agreement between um, the LHJ and the City of Longmont to administer what we're calling the locally funded voucher program. So as Council um, may recall, this is a recommendation that came from our Homeless Solutions for Boulder County Housing Exits team, uh, where we were um, 
identifying a lot of different ways to get to um, 250 additional units that we would make available for folks that are um, exiting homelessness and to um, move folks into uh, stable permanent housing. One of those strategies was for the local governments to uh, contribute what we call um, locally funding, contribute money so that we could have, uh, we could basically ask the LAJ to operate a locally funded voucher program similar to how they operate the, um, the, the tenant-based uh, voucher program through HUD. We um, identified and, and set aside 215,000, that was a set aside from the Human Service Agency funds to fund this, because this would be an ongoing expense. And we are looking at housing um, around, again, 12 uh, households in, um, in a combination of the um, leases at the Briarwood Apartments. We could have up to uh, seven uh, units at the Brownwood Apartments that we could fund through this uh, through these dollars, and the rest of the funding would be through um, working with private landlords to um, to pay them for uh, again for units for the um, for, uh, again for up to twelve individuals. So this is the IGA that outlines all of that, and um, and then if counts if the commissioners uh, adopts this tonight then we will bring this back for the city council to um, to adopt next Tuesday, October 26th. Do you have a motion? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, do you have a question? Yeah. All right, Mr. Council, or uh, Commissioner. Oh. Um, does this include everyone, uh, not just families, but also single men? I didn't Does it include everyone so single it's, man? And it's basically adults. So it's single adults, either um, individuals or couples, but it, it does not, it's not for families. Mm. So again, this is for a, adults who are involved in the homeless solutions for Brother County. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is not family housing. I would move. Resolution 202107. Okay. So moved. Okay. Do have a second? Second. All right. It's been moved. Uh, resolution LHA 2021-07 has been moved by Councilor Commissioner uh, Christensen, and seconded by Commissioner Peck. Anybody want to say anything? Debate? No. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. Can I, can I ask a question? Vote's been taken. Yeah, I, I wouldn't change my vote. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Uh, yeah. So the, the the motion carries unanimously. Just does that? What does this bring us to in terms of vouchers? This, this is added to the LHA uh, portfolio of vouchers, right? This 200, or these 12 units? Yeah, but we're not mixing them. But well, um, what's the total number we... So I don't, the number that we are off, well, there's how many we have and there's how many we authorize. So we have, what, 400 and... Close to 400. Four, oh, for, yeah, we're about 402 right now. So this is this would be just a four fourteen. So part of that, so Kendra and I have kind of worked on this. So I think technically we're authorized up to five hundred and eight yeah. vouchers. But you, they, you don't, don't get X no, number of vouchers. <laughs> and so we think that we we think based on what HUD rules are in terms of hold the money you hold, unless it's changed, we kind of landed on around four hundred and twenty ish. 420 is being fully funded in vouchers just because of the amount of money you have to hold in order to have that cushion in case rents go up. So if that puts it in perspective. Thanks. All right, uh, this one's a simple one, Resolution LHA 202108. It's approving the write off of bad debt to ask for Meadows neighborhood. If I can just, I want to go explain ahead. this. Go ahead. I need to explain this one a little bit because um, we had a resident who was wrongfully terminated by the prior administration in the HCD program. And, and during that, they were wrongly charged for the tenant for full rent at one of their managed properties. Um, we can't reinstate the voucher retroactively and correct the rent, collect the rent from HUD. And so since this was an LAJ error, um, it was determined that uh, in what was, they were incorrectly charged, then we need to write that off on our books. All right, any questions? All right, so we want to make a motion? 
for LHA 2021-08? Uh, so moved. All right, to move by council member, or sorry, Commissioner Peck, seconded by uh, Commissioner Waters. Seeing no debate, all in favor of resolution LHA 2021-08, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, LHA 2021-08, that resolution passes unanimously. Let's go on to old business. Um, I guess 6A is review and discuss goals for, from the from the retreat. Do you mean for the retreat? Or no, from, 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 from. From. So, so, yeah. uh, so my, I guess my question is, um, is that discussion better made in three weeks? Meaning, I'm gone, she's gone, Aaron could be gone. You're gonna have potentially uh, one of the two current uh, commissioners as the chair and the mayor. I mean, we can talk about goals, but we, I mean, the three of us might be completely in alignment with them and might change. Are you nervous about your No, this is the um, Housing Authority goals from the retreat okay. that we have. Okay. Yeah. So, presumably, uh, it would be better from a decision making capacity to do that, but I, for one, would like at least a, a, a brief report from the city. Uh, I hope you've been worried working on what's buildable, what approaches for these six properties we're looking at. I'd love to know and not have to wait for another one. That, that, that's fine. So I'm just saying that it's gonna, you're going to hear the gonna same hear information again. again. Yep. You know, and, and I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not going to be I'm not going to be here in the meeting. Five minutes. Yeah, sure. We have five minutes. We can give a file. I'll give you five minutes. Let's do. Let's let's talk five minutes. Get a presentation for five minutes. I'm well, here, well, here's <laughs> the end. Done. Deal. Well, so this is really, so a couple, I, a, you know, a couple things. So hopefully you had a chance to review in your packet. So what we, what we did bring together in our intent tonight was just was to indicate here are the goal areas that we developed based on the conversation that we had at the July retreat. We have had the conversation with the Longmont Housing Authority Advisory Board. They've given us some input. These are not ready for prime time. Um, so, but what we, we did want to just get input from the council about our, are we headed in the right direction based on the conversation we had in July? And that, um, that indeed we would bring back, uh, we would refine these and bring these back with metrics. <coughs> because we realize Commissioner Waters, and how does it pass your, um, your test for what is a, what's a good goal, what are metrics? So. So we wanted to get the um, really get the input about is does this capture what you recall and what you think we need to be uh, focusing on, and then we were um, going to refine this and and bring it back for adoption by the board of commissioners, the new board of commissioners. So so if there are if there is direction that you could provide us tonight or any comments that would be helpful in our refinement, that would be fabulous. And if there are questions that Harold wants to just take to talk about some of the property development, because that is one of the goals, as you see in, sure. in here, um, in terms of rental housing development. So if, if you want to comment on that, that'd be great. So obviously, uh, on, the, on the six properties, Christman was the first one in because we were already working on that. And that's going to be roughly 98 units. I keep forgetting that number. 83. Exactly. 80, 83? 83 to 49 that are 100% um, are fit below 50 you knew that was not either. <laughs> below 50 percent affordable um, the other the remaining units we did a mixed income component on that so those will be 70 80 percent AMI you all approved that we're still working through some of the issues on that one because um, obviously with construction costs today the gap has gotten larger and so we're trying to, to work to figure out how we can close that gap and finish the financing. Some of that's gonna be dependent. Uh, we talked to um, the partner we're working on this with this NGL. They got some really they had some good conversations with the banks, and so they're reworking the pro forma for us to actually see what that's gonna be. Um, the other project that, that's in the hopper is Sunset Heights at El the element um, at the suites, they they put in for tax credits last time they didn't get the tax credits um, we're going to be putting they're going to be putting in again in february um, and hopefully we get those tax credits to finish that project the the next area that we need to look at is the hover lha property that we own on hover adjacent to the lodge in the hearthstone 
and that's the one that we talked to you all about being primarily uh, family housing. Mm -hmm. um, another one, and this is probably going to be a joint project as we look at this, and it's going to be somewhat dependent on um, the Costco project and the work with the nine acres there and how we can create. Um, and obviously this came out of the trip that we made to Pueblo where we looked at the Indy Dwell and doing some kind of combination of an Indy Dwell type thing or a, an Indy Dwell and a Fading West. So we have a mixed income neighborhood there, really focusing on family issues. And those are the four that are at the top of my list in terms of we seeing because we know we have available land. I think we're going to need to search for some partnerships for the remaining two projects. Um, you know, I am kind of looking at how we can do something in First and Main um, in, in a partnership there with the transit station. Um, and so and this is going to dovetail the ARPA. So what you hear me talking about now, think ARPA in, in terms of how we're looking at some of the funding components in this. And, and so um, that First and Main piece is on my mind as well. So then really how do we look for potentially another partner? Um, and and so that's kind of where we are and what we're looking at. The other question that I had was um, the needs assessment, um, the demand assessment. Um, do we have a plan for carrying that out again? again? Is that going on? What's the status of that? So um, I know that Molly, Kathy, Aaron, and Glenn, uh, there is a grant from DOLA so DOLA has a couple of grants right now. <coughs> One of the grants is actually a planning grant to, to go in depth and, and do um, a needs assessment, but also really look at what, what the status of housing is in the entire community, what we're seeing in different sectors within the community. And, and so Erin um, briefed me today. She's meeting with Molly and others on Friday. The biggest question I had on that is do we have staff capacity? Um, because that's going to be a big component of this. Um, I think um, this is one of those because of the timing and when it hit, the grants due Monday, so I have to send the letter, but then we have to bring it back um, to council for approval. But it really is getting at what's the need, what's available, what are the different gaps within the community. And that is ARPA funds from the state via building. So if, if, if the grant is not forthcoming, does that mean we won't do it and we will just be doing it by the seat of our hands or does it? We'll need to figure out a way to do it. We'll, we'll, we'll need to, I mean, we have the other studies that we've done um, that really look at different segments of, of the housing, of housing across our community. And this will update it and, and really take that to, you know, update it where are we going. Did I miss anything, Kathy? The else, Marsha? Mm -hmm. right. Anybody else have anything else regarding that? Well, what's, what's the most helpful feedback or input to you in terms of where you want to go with uh, refining these or narrowing these and then turning them into actual goal statements? So I, I guess what I would say is that um, the, the proposed goals that we have in this document here is what we're planning to move forward with and refine unless you have other thoughts or you say, you know, you need to do the, you know, you need to consider these additional goals or, or maybe scale it back. But this is really what we pulled out of the discussion. And, um, and they did have a conversation with the advisory board that they thought, um, and they gave us some input. We, we, we um, talked to them a couple of times. And so, so generally speaking, are these the right goal areas, the right amount? And then we will come back with, with um, uh, some refinements and, uh, and some metrics about that. So that's what we're looking for. Are we on the right path or stop? Or, and do something else would be great. Well, that may be for a council meeting in November or for an LHA board meeting in November. Right. But those are the right questions. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. It really does. A lot of work has gone into that. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the uh, different types of housing that you're looking at and different types of uh, people, families, and single people. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a better job, I think, of reaching 
the needs of the community with LAJ. So, yeah, I'm with that too. I, I would like to bring up something, although I, I don't want to bring up anything that's actually new because, as we said, I'm not a bond or something that comes from the site. But we, you know, like uh, City Council, when we were not part of LJ, also did um, support the trailer, the, the little home park up on Main Street in buying a co op. And now I've heard that there's some trouble with that. And I also, and I don't know if that's true, that, that they're having trouble, they're struggling. But I do think that it the does. The mobile home community that we helped, is that what you're saying? Yes. You know that? They were working with Rock and Yeah, I haven't heard that they're. Oh, okay. Well, all right. I'm just saying that, that because uh, mobile home parks are the largest unsubsidized uh, low income house in the country, that's not really in the purview of the OHA. But perhaps we should think about how it's being. Because I think that there was a mobile home park that tried to buy uh, in, in this town, tried to buy the owner, which was part of a new statewide initiative saying that they had the right to do that, and the owner didn't know why. You know, if there's something we can do to be more supportive of mobile home parks uh, without it being uh, out of the, the of, uh, Who's the we in this case? Oh, I'm talking about LHA. But I don't know that that is in any LHA. I don't think it is. No, I don't think so. So, okay. and, and just to that question, the only thing I heard about that mobile home park is there were some rumors about, this may have, came from, this may have come from Susie, uh -huh. about eminent domain Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they? But it was the yeah. same individual that we were having that we we were challenging. Well, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I've heard from there. But I haven't heard anything about it's not working. Okay, it's a different mobile home, home park as well. Yeah, is that the same mobile home park? Not, not this will help the we yes. back yeah. alone. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead. And then uh, we'll find all changes. We'll review those changes. Yeah, so this is a uh, you count uh, the commissioners provided some direction to, um, to to staff at your last meeting mm -hmm. that uh, we should change the bylaws that um, that the mayor pro tem would automatically serve as the vice chair of the board of commissioners. So based on that direction, those are the changes that we included in the bylaws, and we would just need a formal um, adoption of those. I would, I would move that we approve that bylaw change. Second. All right. Um, we second it. All right. All right. We'll give this one to Marsha. All right. Uh, Commissioner uh, Chairman Bagley uh, made the motion. Uh, Commissioner Martin seconded the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the bylaw changes are approved unanimously. Uh, Harold, uh, your comments regarding vacancy, finances, and property, please. Yeah, so Kendra will jump in on vacancy, age receivables, financials, um, and then Lisa will jump in on property reports. Um, I think one of the things operationally that we're dealing with that, that I did want to talk about in this case um, is there are times where we're having issues with individuals. Um, and individuals that are disrupting um, the entire living environment. And, and so um, we are having to go through the processes that, that we're allowed to go through in order to deal with those, those situations. And so I can't get into the specifics in this environment, but um, know that there are a few that you, you may get contacted on, but it really is about behavior issues and behaviors that are disrupting the living environment for everyone else. And so we're, we're going through the process that we need to go through to, to reconcile or to, to manage those situations. Um, for those of you that were part of the housing authority prior to the city taking it over, many of the same, we're, we're dealing with many of the same individuals. The reason I'm bringing that up to you is because 
I think what we found in the sleeps was a great example of this. Um, when, when we talk to Sarah and when we get the reports um, for calls for service and things like that, the, the reports are drastically different than what they were six months ago. And it really took us coming in and building accountability into the system and, and really setting the expectations for what it's like and what you need to do to live in a multifamily housing project and, and, and how you need to live with other people in and, and what we're finding is we're gonna have to do the same thing in other areas, um, because if not, I think we will end up going down the same path that where the suites went down. And, and so um, we are taking um, a pretty firm stance on behaviors and, and you know what our expectations are in, in the facilities that we rent, because at the end of the day, we want people to live in an environment where they can feel safe, they can enjoy the environment that they're in, um, and it's and it's not disruptive. And obviously, there's many more components to this, um, but we are going to have to deal with some issues. Um, tangentially connected to that, um, we've we've had two units that have tested positive for meth. Um, one of those, um, we got a bid back for the remediation. Karen just gave me the number. Um, $80,000 um, and we know we have another one. Marshall, you're hanging out with LHA again. Um, and, and so when we talk, so when we talk about accountability and these other things, we know we need to get with Sarah very quickly and kind of figure out what we can do. It's hard with meth. Um, I know um, Commissioner Christensen and Commissioner Waters, when they were in the throes of this during the transition, um, it, it, it's, it's a significant issue. And, and so that's where the accountability has to come in so we, we can manage these properties because um, when we look at that, we get roughly, what, 50% of the remediation Kendra, or 75 from insurance. Uh, I mean, it's, we, I, as far as I know, we get everything but the deductible, so 5,000. Okay. So. 100 dollars I just saw a sign where it's, and so it's a significant cost for us. And, it, and it's a time issue now too. So the, the double hit is now you have to remediate, now you have the increased cost. And based on where the supply chains are in the system, it takes forever to get those um, opened up and then you're losing rent. And so then it's a revenue hit for us too in our pro forma. Um, and, and so we're gonna circle back up and see what we're gonna do, I know. Sarah Arnie was working with the scene. There's a company out of South Africa or Australia that was in the New Zealand. You're in the New Zealand that, that's actually creating a meth detector oh, and wow. they were testing it. And so we don't know if it's real or not, but we're going to have to start tracking this stuff now because um, it, it's too disruptive and it's too expensive. And we've been fortunate that in the cases that we've had to deal with meth. They haven't had a, a shared HVAC system. If you have it where you have a shared HVAC system, then, then you're, you're now dealing with multiple units. And, and so that's something that we're, that we're getting into again. And, and, and again, once we, once we dig into it, um, we're gonna have to hold individuals accountable for our behaviors and what they're doing. So, um, and we need to continue down that road. Well, which property are the two? We have one at the Swedes and one at Aston Meadow neighborhood. So, um, are they? I don't know much about them, but are they actually cooking the stuff in their in their? No, it's smoking. Smoking. Yeah. So most of them are smoking. It when you get the higher test results, it's, they tend to smoke it. Um, if they if they're shooting it up, you don't tend to get the high results. Um, and but those that shoot up tend to be further down the road in terms of their addiction than those that are smoking. But it really is the smoking. When we had to do an eviction, we went into the bathroom and there were meth pipes all over the bathroom. Oh, wow. And um, but fortunately for there at that location, it didn't test hot, so they must have been either outside or, or doing minimal or with the window open or some things like that, but um, it's a big issue. It doesn't have a collection that pipe. 
letters. <laughs> so are those apartments vacant? Mm -hmm. And you evicted the people from them? Yeah. Where, where well, I don't know if we evicted the, the we evicted both of them? Or just... um, the suite homes uh, position, uh, as for those neighborhood, we ended up doing a mutual rescission yeah. and they vacated. Where did they go? On the street? Yeah, I mean. Or they go to another apartment complex, or yeah. and, you know, it's it's dependent on the individual. And you know, honestly, the one at Aspen Meadows was a much larger issue. Those were individual units, mm -hmm. and they were causing problems for the entire property. Mm -hmm. And we did have um, significant um, criminal issues that we were dealing with there too. Mm -hmm. And so um, I heard somebody talking about cameras and what we do. I mean. There's a reason we have to do this mm -hmm. uh, because it really is about um, accountability at locations and and it's not just there. I mean, the other day, I think I told some of you all, um, it was either Kat or, or Lisa said we had to pull a marijuana plant out of the community garden at Fall River. Um, and, and because these are federally funded, they're drug free. Yeah. And, and so you don't have the tolerance in there and it's just uh i definitely see the challenges that operationally they were dealing with and i think we're lucky that we actually have the team in place because we're able to put the resources in and really dig in and, and when we see it pretty quickly in this but we talked about it we, we probably got to get more aggressive um, um, otherwise you know this really the meth issue is what created a significant financial issue for the suites mm -hmm. that really kind of set their financials off kilter because they had so many units that were vacant and they had to put money in for security and it just it just started and, and you can't let it get to that point. We had to, we had to gut uh, a family unit, a three bedroom, as I recall, it was a three bedroom unit at the uh, Aspen Meadows neighborhood. I hope this isn't the same unit. Talking about it's not the same one, is it? No, it is a three bedroom. Oh, it's a three bedroom. No, no. Wow. I mean, that, that, that had to go to the studs. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. That one's not as bad, though, I don't think. It doesn't, it's higher than the suites, which we had to take. I, I know that, that it was confined to just a couple of rooms as opposed to taking the entire apartment down to studs, which is what we have to do for the other one. I know we have quite a few rooms that are you know, higher numbers. So you say get more aggressive, it, absent some meth detection, which we've been talking about for years, right? Uh, and maybe there is one in New Zealand. But if, if not, what's the what's the strategy? It's, it's base accountability. It's it's understanding what I mean, and this is where I mean we've got a really good set of property managers, and that's really the key in the work that Lisa's is doing with the property managers. And it's really being intuitive in terms of what's happening in the community. When you get a sense of what's happening in the community, you start looking into it. And, it, and it's about posting 48 hour notices for inspections, you know, not repeating what happened at the, the suites, but we can post 48 hour notices for inspections. If necessary, it's really working with public safety and following up on what we're seeing in terms of reports coming in and, and utilizing public safety as a resource if needed. Um, and, and, and it's just paying attention and dealing with it when you see it and, and dealing with it quickly. Because you're right. I mean, it, there's just so much you can do, but it's when you're, you can tend to see, and the residents are talking to our community managers now, and that's probably the most significant difference today versus when we came in, we're getting a lot of communication from the residents and it's taking that communication and then act. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't do that, it'll it'll get out from under us in a hurry. I don't know if you all agree or disagree, but you know those are those are the challenges right now. Because there are wraparound services where they live, do you can you and this is probably a uh, question for you, Gene, search people are making them turn in things at the, at the uh, entry maybe at the end. Mm. <laughs> so I, I yeah, think, I, so I, I mean, if there's, you right, know, so I think, or yeah, I think, you know, so, so to, uh, to the commissioner's questions is that 
we, we don't have the magic answer yet. Right. Um, okay. and, but we know that we need to, as, as Harold mentioned, that <clears throat> we really need to, I think, you know, amp up when, when things do come to our attention. How do we take um, appropriate action, legal action, um, and uh, so that we can, can really get on top of it. We don't have the answer yet. We just know that we really need to, um, we really need to, to be more, um, I, I guess, aggressive when, when, we, when we notice when there are signs and, and behaviors that come to our attention. Can we really need to act on that um, quickly and, and legally? Right. So, of course. Of course. <laughs> So that's where we say, can, can you search it? I mean, they have a right to the property, and that's why under fair housing laws, you have to issue a 48-hour notice, um, and you have to go through those processes. And, and so it's a little bit different in that world. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tougher path. Um, but you have to do it. And we've done it successfully when we've needed to do it. Okay. And uh, it just takes time and effort in that process. And um, focus. Yeah, and focus. And, and I think the thing, it, it comes across very harsh in what we're saying. Um, and I think it comes across as uncaring. And we've used, we're, as we talk about other things, the term is um, compassionate compliance. But there's a point where it has to come to the end when you're dealing with multifamily resident with many other tenants. And, um, you know, it's not easy going in when they're doing an eviction and, and, and you're literally removing somebody's stuff. And, I think most of us have participated in doing it, but it's what you have to do for the entire residential unit. And otherwise, you know, we will end up back in the position we're in. Well, and the other, the other tenants, our good tenants, need to feel secure mm -hmm. and that you're going to protect them as well and that not let the other influences override. So I get that. Um, let's see what was Call us and ask us. Call us and ask Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you had mentioned a couple of months ago about uh, needing more case managers, etc., in the suites, or it would be nice to have or uh, house mental health partners working for you. So two questions. Yeah. They, they did hire the the joint case manager uh, for the suites, the lodge, and the Hearthstone. Okay. That's actually with senior services. Um, to the other question, I'm trying to think how to answer it. So I, what, Why don't you answer I will answer. It? So I think. Um, <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> so yeah, so we did we did hire. Uh, her name is uh, Melinda Cercio, and she is uh, so she's spending uh, again part time at the suites and part time at, at Hearthstone and part time at, at, at the lodge, and so. We have um, you know, continued to strengthen our relationship with the case manager for mental health partners that is, uh, is at the suites. So we have regular weekly meetings, we have monthly meetings. Um, Melinda is, is gonna be on site at the same time that the uh, mental health case manager is on site. So we are really working, um, really building that relationship so that right. we can um, really provide support and um, that's that's needed for the residents of this week. That's good, and it's also needed for you, you know, to uh, be able to have somebody there that's picking up that side of the load. So uh, good, I'm glad that that's yeah, she's, coming together. Yeah, she's been here about three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, and um, is, is making a huge difference so far. So. Well, and Michelle and Brandy and right. all of the senior right. services, I mean, and, and the partnership with the property managers, and so, I think operationally that's a big change too, and that the partnership with those folks and Lisa and the property managers, but then also the partnership with the maintenance folks. And so there's really now a true team that's kind of working, and, and, and you're seeing the results of that. And that's credit to these folks over here. All those folks back there. Yeah. <laughs> Harold, um, in terms of the budget and occupancy rates, uh, for the last few years, at least as long as I've been involved, uh, we, we targeted a 97% occupancy rate to make the, the, the financials work. Uh, and I see for the last four months, we haven't, there hasn't been a month where we've been at 97. Is that the same 
number we used going into this year? Is 90, 90, I don't 97. think we did 97. We based it on. We based it on the three year average of what was happening <clears throat> on the vacancy rates for this year, for, for 2021. I do believe in 2022 we are looking at 98. Is it, did you say 98 or 96%? 96. 96. 96%. Occupancy. What was what was the three year average? It was different for every property. So um, I, I didn't do really a percentage, just a three, I went through each property to get what their three year average was as far as vacancies and that's what we took. Um, but I can definitely get you that information. Well it'd be helpful to see that whatever that whatever that number was compared to the actuals. So we know where we're Okay. Do we have some idea of where you know what yeah, we're think, falling behind. I think the difference was we like, based the number on actual performance versus theoretical performance, which um, has really helped us financially. Um, that was probably the biggest shift. So we could just add that. Yeah, we'll add that. Thanks. Any other operation issues? That's mm -hmm. uh, Kendra and Lisa. I think they have um, the age receivables vacancy and financial reports, <laughs> and then Lisa will do the proper a quick property update. Well, the first report provided was the availability report. So as Tim mentioned, we are at nine, we're sitting currently at 96% occupied um, up from August. Since this report, we've had actually two of our long-term rentals been occupied. We had one rental that's been vacant for a year over at Aspen Meadows, and that was occupied last week. And then one at the suites that's been vacant for almost a year was occupied last week as well. Um, I'm really pushing the team right now to get those units turned and get these moved in so we can end the year. I'm hoping for a 98 by the end of the year. So the Aspen Meadows Apartments one that was held because of the, um, was it partially held because of the renovations? Is why it was so long? Or yes. I'm talking about one. No, that, well, the, the one was the uh, eviction. It was like a skip eviction and then we can get the furniture out because of COVID and habitat and then we can get a dumpster, so it took a lot longer to get that one turned, but that one is now occupied. Okay. And, and ask, just in terms of wait lists, because um, I see we're going, you know, referring to checking wait lists and keeping them updated. What kind of wait list do we have right now? Um, um, just generally. The Hearts and the Lodge, which just closed last week, we got 33 new applicants for the wait list, which will help us fill those vacancies. The PBB had over 100, I think. So that's going to help for Fall River, Aspen Meadows neighborhood. Yeah, good. So. Right. Still a lot of people waiting for housing. And then, uh, on a related note, I received a couple of phone calls today from someone saying that they are in dire to disabled people who got their grandkids um, that need a voucher and passed them on to you. I don't know. I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> Send them, send them yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, anything else from staff? So to give you a little um, background on the financial reports, the first report is the aging summary. What we did find out when we came on board is that a lot of the tenants' accounts are incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, postings were wrong, whether it was rent was posted wrong, rent was applied wrong. We found rents for tenants on the wrong tenants. Um, as they begin to move out. So we are looking at every tenant record as we go along. So we started this process with the advisory board to kind of show what progress we're making. On the, on the re re receivable report, you'll see what's called a HAP subsidy suspense. What that is is we've received money mm -hmm. that we never charged rent for. So we probably could owe HUD back, but what we're finding is what was happening is they were posting rent incorrectly and they were correcting on the tenant ledger, but they weren't correcting what should have happened on the tenant ledger. Okay. So we're getting those fixed. As you can see within this one, we went from 23,000 to 16,000 with just some um, corrections that we had to make um, within this last month mm -hmm. that we're working on. You also see prepayments, which is really kind of a little odd for low income families to have all these prepayments. What's happening there is they were applying HAP payments to the tenant side. So we have so many anomalies going on, but we have to look at every single tenant record and go back almost three years to find out when the anomaly happened. And the problem with that is 
accounting wasn't involved. They pushed it down to the property managers that didn't have any processes in place to, to review and make sure that things were being applied correctly, um, collections were being done. Um, you're probably going to see within the next couple months, uh, we may have to write off a lot because there are a lot of past tenants that have balances on their account that we never followed the bad debt policy, we never did collections and that type of thing. So we'll have to, like, we're, we're looking mm -hmm. at those one by one to see exactly if we need to write them off or if the rent was posted incorrectly and what adjustments we need to make. So that kind of gives yeah. you this, but it is a lot of records and it's very slow going. I mean, each record can take almost up to two hours just trying to review, because we have to review it, then we have to reach out to the property managers to get the, the certification letters, like what certification letters we have to show us what the actual event should have been, mm -hmm. so that we have source documentation for when we actually make these corrections as well. Okay. So that's where this first report started. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions on that? Nope. The next, um, the advisory board wanted to see both the balance sheet and the income statements. So on a monthly basis, we do this for and I need some hard copies that are a little larger than what was in your packet. <laughs> if anyone, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so on a monthly basis, we do this for all of the properties. On a quarterly basis, you'll see this for LHA and LHC because those financials are managed more on a quarterly basis. We we're hoping to get to a monthly basis, but we haven't got there yet. So this will show you pretty much the balance sheet. Um, what you know, they have unrestricted cash, which is usually their operating, and they have restricted cash, which is usually any type of reserve account or security deposits. Mostly, um, then your receivable is is basically tenant receivable, along with liabilities, payables, and, and equity. Um, if you move to the income statement. Um, we tried to do kind of a summarization so you don't have to see the full income statement. You know, what we budget for admin expenses, tenant expenses, utilities, and so forth. Um, for all the properties, with the exception of the Suites and Village Place, we actually um, have a large net income right now based on what's budgeted. So we're actually sitting pretty for a lot of properties. The one with the Suites is um, a lot of that is based on the insurance claims we have. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of expenses right now that we haven't received insurance proceeds from. For Village Place, um, we have the same situation where we have also reserve replacements where maybe the water heater went down or the boiler or we did the security system where you're going to see the expense, but it's actually being paid and it's only a cash transaction because we're requesting reserve replacements for that particular um, expense but we'll show greater expense than we will show any income on this mm -hmm. on the statement because it's basically just a cash transaction. So that's kind of where everything sits. Um, we also have a lot of um, reasonable accommodations happening at Village Place, which has also increased the cost, um, which is not necessarily a reserve replacement request. Um, there are also bike tubs in senior buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where we started with the advisory board. If there's other stuff that you would like to see, please let me know. I'd be happy to accommodate. And if anybody has any questions. Oh. Anything else? Any no property updates? Are you good? Um, provide, we provided you a sheet of um, property updates. I'm just going to hit on a few. Um, the suites, the residents have to, um, formed their own yoga class on the weekends, mm -hmm. and so the manager comes and kind of just keeps an eye on it when it's going on, but they have about 15 residents that are now participating in that. Um, Village Place, we actually had a new manager start last Friday, Adam Sanderson. He's um, taking the reins. The residents are loving it, loving him. Um, they're really getting to know him, come down, visiting with him, and he's making a presence, and they're happy. They're very happy over there right now. Spring Creek, we got the mold test results back and those were negative. Um, the Heart Center Lodge, we had their wait list open as we discussed. And we are still looking for an assistant manager, a maintenance tech, and a um, housing choice voucher specialist. Any questions? Nope. 
Mr. Kabowski. Anything else? <laughs> We're good. All right, cool. Then let's go on to any commissioner comments. I, I do have, Carol, I provided you some input from Aspen Knows residents about wall hangings. Yeah, I'm good with them. That's on my list. So, mm -hmm. so it, yeah. it would be good to circle back and let them know that um, that it's not been ignored. Yeah, that's yeah, on me. So they don't like their puzzles? No, no it's not that. It's, um, uh, whoever made the decisions about wall hangings, uh, I think was probably trying to send the real positive messages with what we were doing with wall hangs, and it's just been interpreted in a particular way by residents that um, I was not intended in terms of the wall hangs, but it, uh -huh. there's just a history there, and um, I think it'd be just good to sit and, and listen to them and figure yeah, out. I was going to try should. to reach out and ask some questions, and that just got caught up to another thing. Yeah. So. All right, anything else? All right, let's go ahead and we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, moved by Dr. Waters, seconded by Commissioner Peck. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, motion to adjourn. House unanimously. We're adjourned.